God doesn't need us to understand every little thing or else, you know, I mean, he's an all-knowing God. He knows, so you don't have to. Healing. So many people pray for it and want it, but I have an artist here with me today named Katie Nicole, who has a song specifically about praying that over people. Girl, th this song has like a life of its own. Can you tell me about what it was like to write it and if you had any idea that it was gonna like go viral like this? I had no idea. I mean, no idea. I did not think in my wildest dreams. You know, I, I do this thing called TikTok. It's, yeah. it's that fun app for, you know, the young generation, <laughs> <laughs> the young peoples. Yeah. I, and I mean that because I was a small group leader for seventh graders. They said, Katie, get this app. It's amazing. And I was yeah. like, absolutely not. You said no? I said no. This was in 2019. You know it's going to change your life. And in 2020, I was like, it's quarantine. I'm stuck in my house. What am I going to do? <laughs> what was what that app I... called? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? You didn't and... get it until the pandemic hit? Yeah. So it was in the year 2020. Right as it hit, I was like, I'm bored. I need something to do. And actually, I started making stupid videos. Of course. Because as, as one does. Um, and those videos did not do anything. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll post some music on here. And those videos still didn't do anything. So I just kept doing it. Had you always been a singer? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you've been singing since you were a kid. Yeah. And you thought, let me just take this to the internet and just share my gift. Yeah. And so I downloaded this app and I, you know, I started posting music videos and it was really a, a consistency thing. Like I started to like gain followers through like consistency of posting. Mm -hmm. um, and it was fun for me and I was just making content. So it wasn't really like yeah. I'm, I want to go viral or anything like that. So I had written this song um, in Jesus name, God of possible. And it was actually a song that was being written over time. And I didn't even know. So I wrote the song in August of 2021. Wow. And um, the writers that I was with were writing these lyrics that I was like, you know what, I connect to that. I feel like that's my story. Um, and I hope that someone else feels like they can hear their story through this. Mm -hmm. And I write in a prayer journal. I talk to God that way. My that's goodness, just, that's what I've always done. I love it's that. It's <laughs> wonderful. And to be able to look Absolutely. back and see what he's answered. Seeing or things the answered like that. prayers. Yes. Yes. That's totally why I do it too, because I started that exactly at the same time as I started TikTok in 2020. I was, you know, having a lot of anxiety more than normal. And so I just felt as though I needed an outlet. And so mm -hmm. I started writing this prayer journal and um, had a really hard season of life um, at the beginning of 2021. It was also kind of the best season of my life because um, it was when I got introduced to like my record label and things like that. Um, but I was just praying a lot of different things over my myself because I needed that and I needed Jesus. And um, so we wrote the song and then I go back into my prayer journal after we've written the song and we finished writing the song in November of 2021. That was like five minutes ago. Like yeah, I just said, we recorded crazy. it. <laughs> it's on Way FM like right now. That's insane. Yeah, we recorded it in December. So we recorded it a month after we finished writing the song. And um, I went back into my prayer journal and I started like highlighting direct lyrics. And technically those weren't my words. They were the other writers in the room that I pray for your healing that circumstances would change. That was what I wanted to say. But that the fact that the direct words were in that prayer journal was like a huge God moment for you me. You had been praying them and then someone else wrote them for you to sing. And now That's I get crazy. to pray them over someone else. That Isn't kind of that gives me chills. That it shows that God is in it because mm -hmm. I don't think anybody has seen a song like this in a really long time mm -hmm. that it just really takes on a life of its own. Wow. So when did it first get shared and what was that? next day like because I feel yeah. like it just blew up <laughs> well I recorded like a little clip of it right after I wrote it so a week later um so I I posted it to TikTok I was sitting at this like grand piano and I just felt like oh this is so pretty like this looks so cool um and and not really God was like I'm gonna use it it's not even about how it looks girl <laughs> well the crazy thing was that I'm I'm recording a couple videos as content for the week and um specifically in Jesus name I Right before I posted it, I prayed over the video. I just said, God, do with this what you're gonna do. I know that this feels like my story, but if, if it's only one person who feels like it's their story, that's the only person I was supposed to reach. Wow. So I was like, God, just do with this what you're gonna do. I just hope to hear a story. I just hope to hear something that you're doing through this because I feel like there's something powerful and I don't know what that is. And a funny thing is I left it for like four hours and I came back to a million views. 
So I don't <laughs> think that. Were you so shocked? I'm, I mean, that's that's insane. Insane and completely not what my intentions were. But you hear, like, I think it's interesting for anyone who's listening to this because you hear about what that's like. Yeah. And we all are like, uh, we did something funny on our phones and you put it down and you're yeah. like, and you can't imagine picking it back up and being like, a million humans have seen this. And oh. then it went crazy. What was it like for you when people started using the audio in their own videos? Well, the thing is, is that I didn't even know the extent of how many people were using it. I was seeing videos come through like daily, but I didn't really know how many people were seeing this, were hearing this song, and also just like that it was this little tiny clip. It was unbelievable, and the ways that they were using it were so incredible. Is there one you can think of that sticks with you? Yes. Yeah, please share. Yes, there was a little girl who had cancer, and her mom was recording her journey, and eventually, they were using this song in multiple videos, she was cancer free. And you got to watch that? And I got to watch that. With your voice praying for healing? Yes. Oh, my word. It the, these are the beautiful. things the internet was made to do, Katie. And you get to be a part of it. Ma- amazing. Yes. Okay, so I want to know about your story, because this song mm-hmm. is specifically about, I pray that God would change your circumstances. Yeah. And you've had a scoliosis journey, which is why I want to talk to you, because mm-hmm. my brother has had such a similar journey that yeah. he was diagnosed when he was younger, had rods put in his spine, Mm -hmm. had them removed two years ago, which is like, it's excruciating what you have been through. And so Mm -hmm. I just want to know what your journey of healing has looked like. And as we we talked right before this interview, you still deal with some pain. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with that in your relationship with God? And yeah, what has it looked like? Yeah, I mean, it's really having a bold faith every single day and taking just one step. Because here's the thing, forward is only one step Mm -hmm. and God can do the rest. Mm -hmm. And so if I wake up every day with the intent to glorify God in everything that I do and obey God in everything that I do, I can do that through the pain. I can praise Him through the pain. And the thing is, is that it doesn't mean that it's gone away completely because it hasn't. I am on a healing journey. Healing is lifelong. Yeah. Up until eternity, that's when ultimate healing will happen. Yes. So you're going to face things in your daily life. Circumstances may not change, but that doesn't mean that God is not still who he says yeah. he is. It means that he's he's right there in the middle of it with you. And the thing is, is that praying for healing is praying that God would be present. Mm. It's praying that God would be over your life throughout the entire thing. Miracles are not always huge miracles where, you know, my spine came back straighter after I had the rods removed. That's and, amazing. And that's unbelievable. That's a miracle. That's a huge miracle. But that's the only giant miracle I've ever seen in my life. Other miracles have come when I just was looking and I was seeing what God was doing. hmm God is always moving. Mm-hmm. God is always in it with us. Mm-hmm. Don't miss those moments. Yeah. That's all I can say is don't miss those moments. That's powerful. I think people, some people have heard your, the short version of your story, which mm-hmm. is that you were healed. Mm-hmm. And I expected to sit down with you today and be like, you never had another problem with your spine in your life. And to ask you what you would say to someone who that's not their story, because yeah. that's my brother. He struggles every single day with pain. Yeah. And to know that, you still have a strong faith in God and you go, I have seen a miracle and yet I still live with pain every day. Mm -hmm. I think that's so powerful for a community of people who deal with chronic pain. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone like my brother who does wake up every day and is like, I, when you, when the pain comes, what do you pray or where do you go in your mind? You know, when the pain comes, it's easy to ask yourself why. I very recently have had that where I've just been like, God, I don't understand. Yeah, like, you're why in pain right today. Now? Yeah, like mm-hmm. why right now when everything seemed to be going in a good direction, I felt good. I felt like life was, you know, I was living my best life. Um, I just don't understand it. But I think that's the point. God doesn't need us to understand every little thing or else, you know, I mean, he's an all-knowing God. He knows, so you don't have to. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is that when I get into that place, I I really just do find myself praising God for everything that's going right. That's really insightful. Because the thing is, is that everything's not going to go right every single day. I'm going to wake up with something new every single day. And that's okay because God is still good. Yeah. God is still good. And if He says He's who He is, then healing will come day by day. So healing may not happen in the moment that you need it to happen. Healing may not happen in the timing 
that you want it to happen or how you want it to happen. Mm -hmm. But I can encourage you to just keep moving. Yeah. Because that's what I've been doing every single day is I just take the next step. If you live your days as in the present, God can work through that. He's not asking you to look a week later. He's not even asking you to look an hour later. Yeah. He's saying, I will get you through this moment right now. Just trust me. And so that's the only reason I have the faith that I do. Man, being present and carrying gratitude. I think those are so powerful. Mm -hmm. And it's radical to worship Mm -hmm. through pain and Mm -hmm. to worship through some unanswered prayers. But Mm -hmm. what has it been like for you now that you are, you have a record deal and you're on Way FM and you're on the radio. What has it been like to suddenly go from, I post videos online to being like, oh, people get to hear my Mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. What has it been like for you to share it and have people like looking at you, like, tell me about your relationship with God? (laughs) Yes. um, I mean, I think it came with a lot of pressure at first and, and that weight was a lot to carry. But what happened was I saw my story being like a tool for someone to realize, oh, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not walking through this alone. You know, we know we're not walking through this alone as Christians. We have God right by our side. But sometimes it's really great when you have a person who's dealt with some of the same things you're dealing with, even if it's not to a T, the same exact story. I've had people come to me and be like, you're the voice that I never had. You're the voice for the voiceless. Yeah. And that's crazy because, um, a funny, funny little story. I used to have a page, an Instagram support page for kids with scoliosis. Oh it's called goodness. Scoliosis Superhero. I love you so much. It was it was a big deal for me. I, I spent a lot of time talking to other kids because I felt alone. And now the thing is, is that I'm carrying this, you know, support page. I was an ambassador for Shriners Hospitals for Children. Oh, that's where my brother had his surgery. Yeah. Yeah. And and so, and I, you know, I went into hospitals and I just wanted to be like, you're not going through this by yourself. There are other kids who are dealing with this too. And it's not always a perfect surgery. You're better. It's all good now. Right. You know what? If it was like that, that'd be a perfect world. And we don't live in that. Mm-mm. We don't live in that. And so the thing is, is that I I look at the way that I'm able to use this song in the fact that it's Jesus' name. So maybe someone who doesn't know what to hold on to right now is going to start holding on to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And that's my hope. Mm-hmm. That's my hope and my prayer is that someone's going to find Jesus. And I've heard that story. I've heard it's that story. It's been happening through the song. It's been happening through the song. Well, it's so clear. I love that there's no it's crazy. like wondering what the song is about. No. You were overt, girl. You're I like, just, I'm not praying this statement. in Katie's name because she can't. I'm praying this in Jesus' name. No, and I wouldn't want to pray it in my name because I'm pretty sure it would actually just fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that's okay. Yes. Um, it, it's such a powerful season to have this song too. Like you wrote it mm-hmm. in the midst of the pandemic. Did you were um Did your viewpoint on it change? Did you have your surgery during the pandemic to have your rods removed? Is that when you experienced your healing? No, I didn't. Before that. Yeah, it was about two years prior to Mm -hmm. that. Um, So 2018 was my my surgery. And such a crazy thing that happened to me right before the surgery was that I was introduced to the worship pastor at my church in Arizona. And I wasn't singing Christian music before I met him. And... um, I had no intentions of going into Christian music, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, But I went to a Christmas art fest and I was playing my last gig before Mm -hmm. I had this surgery with the rods in my back. And that was kind of like a big deal for me because I was like, this is the last time that I'll have to deal with the excruciating pain. Like I really had this faith that God Mm -hmm. was going to come through. And I don't know where that was coming from, Mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, But I was introduced to the pastor and the worship pastor Mm -hmm. at that church. Um, and they were like, do you want to come sing a special piece on Christmas Eve? And I was like, actually, no, I have to go get surgery. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and also I don't sing Christian music, but maybe later. Oh when, my word. You said no. <laughs> and look at you. How did this happen? I was like, can we stay in touch? Yeah. <laughs> um, and the thing is, is I went into the surgery and coming out of the surgery was like, it was the depression. It was the dark cloud of depression that faded away. Wow. I'm telling you that there was not a window in the ICU, but there was light. Mm-hmm. There was a light that came through, and maybe it was the little, like, Christmas light on my finger that was <laughs> taking my pulse, <laughs> but it felt that like was, something different. There. <laughs> yeah, there was still light. And so I, 
I just felt the presence of God over me. And I felt a new purpose in my mm. life, not even sure what that was yet. About a month later, I thought to myself, you know, maybe I could write a Christian song. Maybe I could write a worship song or something like, like I've that. I've experienced God in the ICU. Well, and I had these words to say. Mm-hmm. I had this like aching deep in my soul to say something. And so um, I ended up being like, Josh is his name. I was like, Josh, I don't I don't think I have a Christian song to sing at your church. And he was like, some of your songs sound Christian. Just sing one of those. I was like, I don't think I can do that. Well, I'm faster. I like him so much. Well, it's Josh Havens from the after. So oh, <laughs> yes. You know him. Yes. <laughs> but, um, but he was like, you know what? If you, you have a song that's, you know, near and dear to your heart, just share that. Yeah. Well, instead, I wrote a song in 24 hours that's called Shine. It was based on Matthew 5, 16, which is ironic because I didn't write it about the encounter I had with the Lord on the day I came out of my surgery. But you wrote a Christian song in 24 but, hours. Yes, it's like this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Like that's in the song. Like it's such a VBS song. It's so funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was the beginning of something. It was Amazing. the beginning. Well, and Josh was like, I love that. Can we record that? They had a recording studio in their church. And it took two years for us to actually record the song. But like... We, we did end up recording it, oh. and it's so funny because it probably will never see the light of day. Ironic because it's called Shine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was my first time of really feeling like, okay, maybe I could do this. And, oh, wait, my songs are better with the name of Jesus in them. Yeah. Period. And who would have thought the song that God would then use you as a vessel to take to people was going to be all about his name. So he was like, I got to bring you on this journey Crazy. so that you'll start singing about me mm-hmm. and using your voice. And it, it is a powerful voice. Yeah. And so I just wanted to thank you. You may not have asked to be the person that we're looking at See. when it comes to conversations about chronic pain and healing and faith, but God has you here for a reason. He totally does. So he thanks totally for does. singing that over us, girl. Oh, man, it's an honor, truly. <laughs> Thank you.